Hello and welcome back to Whale of a Tale Part 2 where I'm going to do my best to kind of finish up this drawing and see what we can uh, see what we can make of it. Um, the things that I have left to do on this guy are going to be, I'm going to add a little scuba diver down here with a flashlight sort of illuminating this book. I don't think I'm going to get to the book today where I'm going to actually like choose the text to go in here. So I'm going to ignore that today because I still haven't decided. I think I'm going to probably do something a little cryptic, maybe even add some sort of little hidden things in here. Who knows? But we will see. So I am going to go ahead and try and finish up the whale. And I'm going to go ahead and load up my sort of reference images. And I'm just kind of lightly looking at these images and deciding if it's something that I want to add, then I'll add it. If not, I won't. And I'm just trying to learn along the way which, which sort of textures and things will look really good on this whale. So I'm going to kind of pick and choose that as we go. So I'm not picking from any one reference image. All right, and I'm just getting some of my tools ready. I use some graphite powder. If you saw the last one, this is one of my favorite things to use, along with a little makeup sponge that always seems to elude me. I have dropped this thing. I have lost this thing so many times. It like bounces all over the place. It's kind of silly. So let's get into drawing. All right. And I still am thinking about the lighting coming from the top right. And I think I want to add maybe a little bit more texture. I'm going to just kind of lightly shade in with a pencil, with a 4B pencil, where I want maybe some more shadow shapes to go. Maybe there's some wrinkles in his blubber. Something like that. A little bit more down here. Just adding some more shadows. And I'm going to take that makeup sponge and I'm just going to kind of dab it on here because I don't want to really lose all these other lines, but I want to try and get rid of some of those pencil marks that I just made. I'm going to kind of layer this. So I'm going to go back and forth a little bit of that, a little bit of pencil, a little bit of makeup sponge, a little bit of pencil. And then I think that creates a really nice effect and you can almost tell that there were layers to it and it wasn't just a single pass. And, and being done with it that way. I'm going to work a little bit quicker today, too, than I was working last time. I was getting the hang of things, just trying to learn a lot about live stream and all the software to go with it. I'm not playing music. No, I'm going to have my music on in the background. And it's going to come through my speakers, and it's kind of right behind the microphone, so I don't know exactly how loud this is. If the music ends up being too loud, let me know and I'll turn it down. I'm going to go with my 8B pencil, probably a lot on this one. So I really want to start adding this depth and I really need to sort of define this line. Also, one of my favorite things with drawing is just adding a ton of contrast to the image, making the brights brighter, making the darks darker. It's really helpful in pencil drawings, and it's a hard thing to achieve in pencil drawings, too, the really dark darks. And the bright lights, you got to kind of try and not really get anything into the paper. Luckily, I haven't done much um, to make it to where I wouldn't be able to get bright highlights, but... It is something that I find difficult to keep the paper clean. That'd probably help if I actually used some sort of tissue paper or something down. So then I wouldn't get this all over my hands. You know what? That's actually, do I have any? All right, so I just grabbed a little piece of tissue paper. And this way I can lay it under my hand. My hand won't get quite as messy. Whenever I'm doing this. I'm gonna add a little bit more shape into his fin. A little bit more curves. A little bit 
more bumps. And I definitely, from some of the references I'm seeing, they kind of have where it almost looks like a tennis racket grip, the way that the bumps go around the edge of the fin. We're going to remove a lot of these outlines and pencil lines here in just a minute. That way we don't leave this sort of harsh shadow. But I also want, I think, to darken up the water around. So I'm going to start doing a little bit of that now because if I'm going to go back in and erase right along that edge, might as well kind of try and get closer to the tone that I'm going for around this guy. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Get rid of that with some of the cleaner side of the makeup sponge. Just going in with a rubber eraser and kind of start adding some of those little maybe bumps and highlights along the way. Uh, that didn't really work out the way I thought. Let's go in with a blending stump. So I'm going to grab one of those on my bag real quick. I silly put away all my tools cleaning up today, thinking I was being smart, and that's what I get for cleaning is making it more difficult now while I'm trying to use it. So just adding some of the shape right around his fin and over into the water. We want to get rid of this darker line still. So let's try and get rid of that with a little bit of the kneaded eraser. What's it called when something has a lot of contrast? High contrast. <laughs> Um, I think you're probably thinking of chiaroscuro. I see people talk about chiaroscuro though, whenever it comes to, um, when it comes to paintings. I don't really see people talk about that when it comes to pencil drawings actually. I wonder why that is. I would think that it would be the same same term that's used for uh, for that across the board. You know, that I think that's just an Italian phrase for like light and shadow or something like that. With a kneaded eraser, I, I love this. It looks like I'm starting to get so much more texture out of this fin just without much effort. And a couple of those lines where the skin is going to fold over on itself a few times. Sometimes what I'll do instead of doing a line and then fixing it right away is I'll just, I'll stick with the pencil for a while. So I'm not switching back and forth from one tool to the next over and over. So I'll make like a pass with the pencil and then I'll go back in with the blending stump or toilet paper or whatever, and just make sure to get another pass where I get all those lines sort of exactly where I want them to be. starting to look a little bit better. There's like an extra line out here though. I wonder how deep in water it is that you see like those shimmering light effects. If that's just like a, a surface thing or if it only goes like a few meters deep or something. Because I'm trying to determine how how deep I want this guy to look. I feel like adding a lot more darkness down here to kind of 
be the same level of uh, same value as the darkest part of the whale. Sort of, I think, would maybe harmonize it, bring it, bring it together a little bit closer instead of it just looking like the whale in this book is just popping out on its own without any real depth to the water. I think I'll add maybe a couple of the little light effects up at the top. It's my art. I'll do what I want. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't always have to be 100% accurate, right? We can do whatever we want in our, in our world. That's one kind of cool thing about art. You're just creating your own world. You know, and I did decide, I was talking about last time, I think, that I didn't want much foreshortening on this book. I wanted it to just be a little bit flatter so you could really see that. But I, I think I do need to add some sort of perspective lines to it. And the book almost looks like it's going the wrong way to me because I didn't add any perspective lines. So we're going to bring the top in a little bit. The bottom part of the book is going to be wider because it's closer to us. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, make that top a little bit skinnier, keeping the bottom about the same width. That way it looks like the book is coming out towards us a little bit more. I can fix this pretty easily. I just, ah, I got to be careful not to go too dark too fast before really identifying where I want that line to be, make sure that's in the right place. I do that a lot of times because it's like, oh, well, I already got those other dark areas, but then I just end up wanting to make a small adjustment, but then it's really difficult to erase. So I don't want to do that to myself either. Hmm. I think, I think this top part still needs to come in a little bit. See, like that, if I would have put down, well, actually, if I would have done the reverse, then it would have been really hard to erase this line. But I think I want to make it, if that's coming like this, like this, I think the center line needs to be adjusted a little bit over to the right here too. Eh, a little bit, not too much. You lose sun visibility at 60 feet. Huh. Okay. So, man, I don't know. I don't know what these whales' patterns are, if they go super deep or not. I think these are the kinds that you can see at the, sh at the uh, surface a lot. Well, I guess all whales have the surface, right? So, maybe I don't go too, too dark with the base of this. Page almost feels too small over here on the left for me for some reason. Maybe it is too small. Most of that's going to fall away in the shadow anyway, because if I think about my little scuba diver that's going to be over here and his beam of light, it's going to fall across the page. Maybe something like that, almost like a reverse teardrop. And then light fall off. Probably be somewhere maybe like there. And that's usually just like one ring in scuba diving lights because scuba diving lights are very focused to be able to cut through the water. So it doesn't have a large fall off. So a lot of this I think is gonna be over in shadow anyway. And this is in some shadow, and this is almost in none. Let's take the blending stump and get rid of some of that. I think I want to start to define my little scuba guy. So elbow bent up. See, 
inking left elbow so that way you can see i'm holding the flashlight if i do the right arm then that would cover up most of what i need you to see for the story this is all start to make a scuba tank and then also i got to determine the size of this little scuba diver because that's going to determine the whole scale of the whale right because we have a lot more understanding of the size of what a human should be. But also I got to think of all the other things like the humans closer to us probably than the whale because they're going towards the book, right? So they'll be a little bit larger because of that. I wonder how I want to do the feet. Probably front one up and the back one kind of kicking down. And maybe a little something like that. I'll have to reference, I think, maybe a couple of images for a scuba diver. But if I try and just think about it without looking at anything first, let's give myself a little bit of a challenge. We've got the back of the goggles. We've got the side of the goggles. Which way does the snorkel come out? Does that come out on the right side? I think the snorkel is on the right side. I feel like it is. I, I guess you can move it whichever way you need to. Now, I know scuba diving snorkels, but scuba divers still have snorkels on their gear. It's just usually hanging off to the side while you're using your compressed air. So, and then I would think about the little Darth Vader part, right? Right in front of the mouthpiece and yeah, I'm definitely going to need to get a reference image because I can't remember all the little hoses and tubes and stuff. And then we're going to have the tank on the back. And I know there's straps that keep that tied down. Bottom of the tank. Scuba diver is becoming a little bit bigger than I think I want them to be. But maybe that's good. Maybe that's... Maybe that's okay, because if I do it, the scuba diver too small. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. I appreciate that. Are you already done with your live? If you're still live with us? Because I know you had a book uh, live go at the exact same time that this one started. So thank you for making the effort to come over here. Just thinking about the scuba diver. We're not going to see a whole lot of them anyway, so maybe I just don't worry about it a whole lot. Just do a little hose, shoulder, elbow. Because if I make up this all myself and I don't reference any image, then there's definitely no copyright issues, right? <laughs> not that I can't use a reference image. That would be better for me to probably do, because I think I think I'm off on a little bit of my proportions, but at least I'm getting a general idea of the scuba diver. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit bigger. Thin. And the other leg coming down on the back. see so i think this one would be coming yeah if i think about this one as it's kicking downward then the fin flaps upward because the water's pushing against it this way and then if i think about this one having gone basically the opposite way having gone downward i guess they're bringing it back up so maybe it's bending a little bit like that. That looks like an extra long leg, even considering the fin. <laughs> but maybe it's not. Maybe I just have some little things off. That's okay though. I'm good with that. That gives me at least that general idea. And 
Let's see, so I'm thinking about holding the flashlight now. So if I was gonna hold the flashlight like these set of pencils, and then I'm coming over from sort of this angle. So really probably won't see much hand. Flashlight. And you know, we're gonna do a Hollywood trick probably with this too. One thing that Hollywood does when they're on a budget and don't wanna put a lot of things behind it is they do really dark scenes. That's why scary movies can be uh, done so cheaply is because everything's so dark. So maybe if I wanna lose some of the, uh, the details that I would otherwise have to do, then see, I lost my makeup sponge. I don't know where it went. Already, I have no idea where that thing went. But if I uh, lose some of the darkness to this guy, then I don't have to get as detailed with him. So I might use that to my advantage a little bit, I guess is what I'm saying. So it's that, just getting some extra graphite down so then I can take a cloth or something like that or my blending stump. Just gonna use the side of the blending stump. Makes that a lot easier. And get rid of those lines and just make it a little bit darker than we had it before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. Longer the legs, the more they propel. Yeah, because uh, we had to do a thing in scuba diving class, Stephanie and I did, where we ended up um, having to count how many times we kicked our legs to get from one place to the next so that we could underwater really determine um, things like distance. But since you can't measure as easily in like feet or have a good idea of that, then you measure how many kicks that you it takes you to go from one location to the next, turn around, see if it takes you the same number of kicks and stuff to get back. And that was a really weird exercise, but it made sense. I think the elbow needs to come down a little bit more. And congrats on your book launch, Jill. That's so super cool. I'm I'm so happy for you. Yeah, you know, Stephanie in my life has gotten a little chaotic, but we are going to be reading it very, very soon. She asked me to pull it out yesterday for her and I did not. So I, I, need, to, I need to bring that back out for her. <laughs> so Jill, was that your first time live streaming? Because this is only my second time. And uh, <laughs> I found out not long before the stream started that the software I was using for the audio, um, the free trial ended. And I was like, oh, no. And that's usually to like play my music and stuff. But I'm like, oh, I'll just play it out of my speakers and see if the microphone. Oh, you've done a few? That's pretty cool. I always get so nervous like beforehand and then I hop on and it's like, well, hardly anybody's here anyway. So what am I so nervous about? <laughs> I was that way before every uh, dance class that Stephanie and I taught as well. She'd be so excited to go out and I'd be like, I hate going out. And then we'd go out and we'd have a lot of fun. And I'd almost do that like kid thing where she'd be like, do you have fun tonight? And I'd be like, no, <laughs> but really I, I had a lot of fun. Looks like Stephanie couldn't find your live earlier, but um, you know, she's having some issues on, on Facebook anyway, but I can help you next Steph time, next time, next time Steph time. <laughs> Now, see, like, I've got, I've got a little scuba diver down here with, like, no detail on him, and he's starting to come to life. Oh, hey, there's my makeup sponge. Ended up on the floor. Secret weapon. 
I don't really have a good shape. I'm losing it right in, right in here. There's like a little outline that's just a little bit too dark. So now I'm gonna make it too light and then too dark again, and then probably too light. <laughs> I do that way too much going back and forth, but whatever. It's a push-pull kind of thing. There we go, though. All righty. So I'm just trying to think about where I want to go next. <laughs> All right, doggy mom, thank you so much. And I'll check out your recording here in just a little bit. Thanks for joining. Tell honey that we said hi. <laughs> I think that's probably a little too bright under there, but that's okay. We'll go back and I just want to kind of redefine some of these book pages so that we can see a little bit of what's going on down there. I want to get rid of some of these lines on the outside of this book too. I'm going to do that same thing, make it way too bright, way too, way too bright. And then go back and darken it up again. And I'm going to use makeup sponge with my graphite powder again. I love that. It just like, I don't know, blends so fast back in there. Just so quick. Just trying to find a couple of the pages or the idea of pages really, more so than actually identifying the each and every page because if I do too much detail down there then that's going to detract from all this other cool stuff going on I need to do a couple highlights on our scuba diver over here as well And if you did try and watch this live and it was rescheduled, I am sorry about that. Not feeling good one day and then the first time I accidentally scheduled the live way too soon. brought out this tissue paper so that I wouldn't get my hand all messy and then I just leave it over there. <laughs> just don't do anything with it. It's really so I can just not ruin what I've already done. Because I could care less about my hand getting dirty. I don't want to smudge around some of these lines that I've already created. There's still something bugging me about the perspective, I think, on this on the left side of this book. I don't know if I need to go more, like make it more dramatic. 
like bring this bottom part out, maybe a touch more to the left, keep the top part kind of where it is. And then, all right, like I have very little desk space in front of me and somehow, oh, see, it's the tissue paper. It's, that's why I left that away because it's just gonna mess me up. I'm trying to hide my stuff, my stuff in my things. All right, do I need to go like that? Does that make more sense? Uh, I think so. I think that makes more sense. And then we got to get rid of this part of the book. We'll do that same thing that I just did a second ago where I make it way too bright. And then we're going to use the makeup sponge to just go in and get rid of that in like no time. I also got some sort of weird line up here coming out. I have no idea what I was doing there. All right. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> this... All right, you know what? I've got an extra one. This uh, This is an older one and I had a feeling I would misplace it. I keep misplacing this thing. I don't know what my problem is. I keep misplacing that makeup sponge constantly. Let's get rid of some of this glow on back. I'm just gonna kind of follow his line because I don't want to try, I don't want to get rid of too much of that. If I do, then it's just gonna disappear again like we had it before and we don't want that. So let me go in with my, find the right pencil eventually. Darker 8B. I'm just going to define that a little bit more. And then we're going to sort of smooth this harsh line off to the right. That way we don't have like a single dark line on his back and we have more of a shadow kind of covering that whole area. So I'm going to make it sort of roll off from the back over around to the right. Uh, I, I, you know what? I don't know how to really compare that relative to other makeup sponges. It's, um, I don't know. It's fluffy and firmish. <laughs> All right. And then I think he's going to have a nice shadow coming in right around here where his tail is going to kind of be connecting to the book. All right. I don't need to go in with the blending stump, I think. Just get a little bit more precise back there. And so I know I've covered the same like area, like right here, like five or six times, but I don't know. I don't care. I don't care if I have to do it several times to get it right. Just creates further depth and illusion to the layering of sky anyway. And I think it's those subtleties that when it comes together or that make it come together at the end. I'm just trying to get rid of a lot of my pencil lines right now with this blending stump. Not necessarily the book lines. I need to keep some of those. I still need to find the cover over here. Ah, ah, this is still bugging me though. I'm still not super happy with this side for some reason. It's like I haven't found that exact right perspective on it. I think maybe that's a little bit closer. So I'm bringing that top part now back out just a touch. If I get rid of this harder line right there, then I'll make blending a lot easier. I think that's a little bit better.
this is where the biggest shadow with the light again is coming from that top right this is where it would be the heaviest i think down here right where all those pages are kind of touching that cover so maybe that's the other problem too is i didn't have enough width on the left side of the book for the pages and then the cover and it was just a little too skinny or something i'm gonna go on with the tiny eraser here in just a second get some of those extra details and then i'll take that makeup sponge again and just let's get a lot of graphite powder this time Put that on here. And I really liked having that pink sponge because I can see a lot easier how much powder is actually on this thing. Just gonna dab that on and then rub it around in little circles. Because I want to get the dark or this uh, bottom left a lot darker. Same with the bottom. Let that flashlight sort of cut through. So one thing that I wasn't considering is that I've got to think about the bounce lighting back on the scuba diver. So not only would there be a highlight coming in from the upper right, just from general sun coming down here now, it's gonna be a lot less sunlight, but there'll still be a little bit of highlights, I think on a scuba tank. All right, maybe I'll have a little highlight off the back of his shiny head. But then there's going to be a bounce light that comes back off of the book and just even off the water at our scuba diver. Now it won't be won't be a ton, but it's enough. I think that just gives our little guy just a little bit extra layer to him anyway. Brings them out just a little bit more. You wouldn't really see much down here, but I'm gonna, this part I'm gonna try and erase is not really, it's not that highlight I'm talking about now. I'm just trying to better define the curvature of scuba diver's body so it doesn't get lost. And let's go back in with our 8B. Just like before, this tissue paper is doing me no favors just being over here on the right side. Because this is just getting way too, <laughs> way too messy. All right, and then still minding the light coming from the upper right. This is, it's still dark because the book cover itself is dark, but it should effectively be lighter than down here or even right below. So let's define that edge a little bit again. There we go. I want to kind of make sure that I can see the top corner of this book because I think that would be one of the easier parts to actually see of this book. I just lost the light. Oh, that's okay. It's actually a little bit more relaxing for me. That light's not on. Going back in with the makeup sponge, just trying to blend out some of that I erased just a little bit too much I think if I go back in with a nice just little little itty bitty highlight right along the edge that'll probably do better because right now the scuba diver almost looks like they have a glow about them you see that and I don't I don't want that glow they're not supposed to be glowing so unfortunately I think what I'm gonna do to make this 
the easiest on me is I'm just going to go over and back and forth a little bit with this graphite powder. I'm going to lose a lot in the process. I won't lose everything. That's okay. But at least I'm getting rid of that silly glow. Glow's okay up there around the flashlight, but not even around his face. I need to redefine that. And it'll pop out just a little bit more. So let's get our little Tombow Mono Zero. Oh, hello, Mrs. Terry Love, a.k.a. Mom. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, Mom. Hope you're having a good night. We are enjoying the pound cake. I think Steph told you earlier. My mom's so good to me. She brought me, my wife, some homemade pound cake, and it was just delicious. So we ate all that, and she just brought us a new one. <laughs> All right, same thing. I've got kind of too much of a glow around different elements of this whale that I don't want to glow. I want I want things to be defined. I want to still be able to see this fin versus the background, but I I got to get rid of this glow. So unfortunately, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the scuba diver, and I'm going to lose I think a lot. Unfortunately, I'm going to try and not by I'm squeezing. Let's see. I don't know if you can see that very well. I'm squeezing this so I have a more defined shape right on the edge of that. So I can hopefully lose less of my defined lines. But I ah, got to get rid of that glow. Well, scent just looks off. It's like a radioactive whale. <laughs> oh, if you get bit by that, are you whale man at that point? <laughs> Debbie, you never get pound cake. <laughs> oh, man, I, I love it because um, all other types of cake to me are just way too sweet. And like my mom also made us a really nice lemon blueberry cake. But that to me is just so much sugar all at once. I'm sure pound cake has a, probably like a pound of sugar in it, but I don't have that icing and whatnot. I'm not really a sweet tooth type of person. All right. I think the, a lot of the glow is gone from the whale. I think there's still a little bit of glow around the book, probably because it kept adjusting so much, erasing and redoing it. But I think if we lose some of the book into the shadow, I think that's pretty cool, actually. I think I like that because it's like, I'm gonna stand up a little bit. It's kind of, I don't know, it's just all blending in together. Makes the image look a little bit more cohesive to me. All right, glow's gone there. There's still a little bit of glow there. We'll redefine that fin. I needed to anyway. Let's get rid of the glow on the top of the fin and around. I think I just need to make this darker. I don't think I need to lose any glow necessarily. And the same kind of thing under his arm. I just need to move the glow too. And around his fin, a little too much white. So this is the most I think I've ever covered. And like, I usually don't go edge to edge for some reason in my drawings on a sheet of paper. Usually we have a border and I let things sort of start to dissipate. So this is a new kind of thing that I'm encountering is covering this much space with this amount of graphite. You should get the hair dryer. My wife's texting me. I don't really know it. She's 
she was saying. Okay. I think that gets rid of a lot of the glow. Um, I need to go in with the graphite powder over here on the right. Let's get this water a bit darker. And then I want to make sure that I also get, you know, I lost, I lost a little too much of that line right there. I'm going to redefine that because I think this area in general needs to be darker. We'll redefine that line though, not a problem. You know, it's interesting as a traditional artist, you don't usually see your work up on a screen or anything. And because of the live stream, I'm looking right in front of me and I get to see it almost as if I get to step up and back away, which is pretty neat because I can tell that this area is too dark now relative to where it should be depth wise. Like it makes a lot more sense for it to be darker down here, but it's kind of, it's kind of neat having that sort of more bird's eye view. I still like backing away from my drawings and standing up and whatnot. I think I'm just kind of used to it, but that's good enough. Let's get our kneaded eraser. I'm just going to kind of flatten this guy out. I'm just going to lightly pick up some of this graphite to make it a little bit lighter. I can kind of create some of that tops of, top effects of the water that I was talking about earlier. And I'll go back and I'm gonna layer this a lot. I think that makes it a little bit prettier. Camera keeps trying to focus and refocus. Sorry about that. You know, I'm gonna need to define that line a little bit. I don't want that glow right there on him, but I can fix that with a blending stump. All right, my hands are already messy, so why not? Let's just kind of smudge things around up here. It's adding some of that depth to the top part. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. All right, let's, let's redefine a little bit more edge. And it should gradually get darker as I go further down his back because it's further away from the light. And then there should also be a bigger area because of the shape the direction of the light, all that good stuff. And blending stump one more time. What I'm doing right now, whenever I kind of do this, is I'm just trying to get some irregular shapes. Let the tool sort of do the work for me. I never did that pass like I said I would do earlier. Just kind of rounding off a little bit of these harsh pencil lines. We'll go back in with our eraser. Get some of those lines back a little bit stronger. Do I ever get nervous when I'm making changes? Uh, 
Depends on the drawing. Uh, to me, if I'm doing something like a portrait and I, I really, really like mess up on the face, that's kind of, it's not nerves. It's so much, it's more of like, ah, oh, crap. If I make this mistake, then I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have to spend so much time fixing it. I really, really don't want a mistake because I don't want to spend that much time trying to resolve whatever it was that I did. So I think it's more because of that. I don't want to do the work over again. I, I did that in my uh, self-portrait oil painting. I had two things that happened on that one that was just really, really not fun. One was a complete accident. One, uh, I had my pad laid, uh, well, I had a sheet of paper and it was in my little like easel holder and it was against the wall and something fell on it and I went, oh no. And I quickly yanked the painting away thinking that that was the right thing to do instead of slowly taking the thing off that was on it and pointing it out in this huge scrape went like right through my face and the oil painting and i was like oh my gosh i i have no idea how long this is going to take to correct but oil painting is pretty resilient and so let me turn that music down a little bit it's a little loud for me and um i was able to just go in with almost like a glaze layer and fix it so that was that was pretty cool it, it didn't take much time at all and there was just this scrape and i just added some oil and a little bit of turpentine i think it was like kind of almost like a car repair patch where it takes a little bit of the surrounding paint and mixes it in i think it kind of ended up doing something like that so that was that was the most nervous i was after doing an accident on a painting I think definitely like the stronger lines under the right fin. Yeah. His right fin, <laughs> like these little guys down here, or are you talking about like right here around? Cause I still need to kind of define that with the water and then I can go in with my eraser and then I can make the highlight right along this edge I'll make it really I think pop nicely and then I know you were saying last time that you liked it where I lost a lot of the book down here at the bottom right and so I kind of created that effect again I'm losing I'm losing the book in the shadows which I like I think is pretty cool I still haven't fully decided what I'm going to do with the book. I know that there's going to be text in here, but I want to, I think I almost want to make it a little cryptic and I don't want to draw much attention to it. We'll see. I don't know. I need a little bit of shadow still underneath. Even though the light is cutting right there, because now it looks like the you can still see through through the light and see the bottom of that book, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a whale of a tail, right? It's not a tail of a whale. So having the book. Sort of be the subdominant feature here. I'm only making him pop out more. I, I want the the way I want the viewer's eyes to journey through this. I think is going to be down. And for I think it's going to be maybe like they're going to see the whale first. I think they're going to see the whale. They're going to see the eyes. They're going to look down at the book because this is going to have a high area of contrast. And high areas of contrast pop out. The other thing that makes uh, different areas of drawing pop out are the, um, the level of detail. So when you add a lot of detail to an area, 
that also draws the eye. So right now I have a lot of detail over here in his eye. I'll make it even darker. It's pretty cool. Because if I add the detail up here, then I think the viewer's eye will go here first. See the whale. No, I think I'm going to make this a t-shirt too. I'm going to make it a lot more obvious because I think I end up cutting out the background entirely and then doing text that says, you know, whale of a tail or something like that around it. Um, I think I might do that though. I might make it into a t-shirt. Hey, where did my music go? Ooh. You know, what would be cool is actually, man, I wonder if I could find an old, like an old pirate's captain book or something, or like a real treasure map that actually exists somewhere in history, and then maybe put that in there. That's a neat idea. I always love maps, too. Maps are always a good choice. Sunken treasure would be neat. Could do a big, you know, like dot, 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 and then X right here marks the spot. But they say X never marks the spot, and then Indiana Jones trying to make that point, you know, X marks the spot, at least in the last crusade. I don't know about those other Indiana Jones ones, the newer ones. No way I was going to watch those. Just ruin. At least that's how I felt. <laughs> Especially with the casting of some of the other people in Indiana Jones. Yeah, I think... Because the scuba diver still needs to stand out, but I don't want him also to be too, too much. I want your eye to kind of like go, oh, and look, there's a little scuba diver down there. I didn't even see that. Like one of the things in the solo adventure. Where is he at? Oh, come on. Not going to let me flip the page. I had somebody look at this and go, I, I love your, your octopus. And I was like, yeah, I got my little scuba diver down here. And they're like, I didn't even see that. And I was like, oh, that's a fun little thing for them to, you know, it, it's a drawing and you get to have a little journey in it too. Cause it's like, Oh, what all is in there? So I think if I make it even darker around the scuba diver and then just do some of the little pops of highlight, he'd both get lost and stand out. Get lost. <laughs> Old tank. Sort of just the top legs and stuff. Top of the fin. Get rid of some of that. Because I can't imagine there'd be much light traveling all the way down here. So there wouldn't be a lot, a lot of glow coming from from the sun even, I don't think. Let's make it darker all, all around them though. Yeah, I think I like, I like losing them and finding them a little bit. Ooh, yeah, maybe some a story of treasure would be really good idea for for the book. But yeah, because I just need a little passage, I think, here highlighted where the where the light's going to actually hit over here on this side. You know, I can. I was going to make it like a book. All I have to do is lots of little dots and just make lines. You know. And then that'll end up looking like text. And then I'll probably end up still blending half of that out anyway. But over here where this is hitting, 
we're going to have a little bit of area that's going to be blown out where you can't see anything. So if I was to bring my my other erasers, where did I put that one? I'm always losing stuff. I need I need help with that. Like this area right here, right smack in the middle. You'd probably almost see like no text, right? Because if I was to think about almost like a camera taking a picture of this, this is when it's blown out and it's way too bright of highlights to see anything. So then the, where it starts to fall off, sort of more up here in this area, that's where you would probably get to really see the text and stuff all around there, around here. Just not in that one blown out spot. All right, I think I need a smaller blending stump to go in with some of these little ridge lines of his body. I'll lose a little bit more light down here. All right, little eraser. Just kind of getting the tops of these ridges just a little bit brighter and little troughs. Of those same ridges. I think this line right here is maybe a little too dark. I'm just kind of lightly going over with this same eraser. Just because I'm being lazy, I don't feel like picking up the other one. It's starting to get, starting to get there. I think that if I just keep maybe identifying lots of little things like the shape of this fin, you know, this is still the white part underneath. So it's not just in shadow, but there is shadow here. I think sometimes it helps me to kind of do, maybe to not think about so much of trying to nail it all in one pass, right? Like. I know that there's shadow down here. This is sort of the underside of the fin, but the underside of the fin is also white. So I need to make sure that I define that, but then also think about the shadow. So maybe if I go just white at first, don't think about the shadow at all, and then go back in and define that shadow I think that might work out a little bit better for me because then I'm not trying to multitask in my head of how this shadow shape should actually be. What comes out soon? You know, I, I talk too much. You guys have been commenting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just looking at this drawing, just thinking way too much about everything that you guys are saying. Thank you so much for commenting and join me on this live. I'm always like, I don't know. I'm always nervous before things like lives. I don't know why. It's always fun. And, I, and I'm doing something I like. I'm drawing. It's not like I'm doing... You know, oh, live recording of my root canal. Just defining this fin a lot better. I, I lost too much of it trying to make that glow problem sort of go away. Let's get a little bit bigger eraser. Or not, you know, because... Oh, it's right over here. You know, if I make the camera angle wider, you guys could actually just tell me what I do with my tools each time since I keep misplacing them. 
little bit more of that down there. And then I'm gonna go back in with my blending stump. I'm just taking the dirty blending stump and just moving around to sort of identify those shadows, the edge of the fin. I only need to add more graphite right yet because there's enough already down on the paper to pick up. Hope all you guys are having a really good, just relaxing, chill night. Over here, it was really nice today. It's pretty outside. Wish I got a little bit more time outside. I need to do some plain air painting, and then I have a real excuse to be outside, too. Oh, I got to study the trees. Make some happy accidents, right? <laughs> All right, uh, that fin definitely needs some help. But I was looking at some of these whales and really the underside of the fin is almost all white. Not just a little bit like I had before, but I wanna make sure that some of that top is defined too as there being a different shade, that sort of blacker shade. So let's do that and come back in. Let's do a smaller blending stump. Just create some texture in here. Not doing anything special in there. Okay. And then I think I lost a little bit down there. Let's find that. We'll blend some of that way into the water. Let's get the top of that book defined again. Oh, the new Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, uh, I think the newer one looks all right. I think they just, they're bringing back all the older characters, right? That's what they do these days. I think we saw the girl from the Indiana Jones movie. I think she's in some of the X-Files. Marion. This is looking pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. There's still some shading that needs to be done up and around to either unify, I guess really to unify the water around them. One thing I need to make sure to do this time, I did some like markings really early on, so I wouldn't forget. That's just to make some bubbles from the scuba diver. Can't remember how many bubbles you make at one time or if it's like a little puff of bubbles. Like, is it just your big exhale and it's like lots of itty bitty bubbles? Sorry if that's annoying on the microphone. I was making lots of itty bitty bubbles. <laughs> Ooh. So for the book you're thinking?
So still, this is going to be a wider part of the book still up there. Not entirely happy with this fin. I think, I think that's just because I need to define that edge between the two colors a little bit more. Yeah. That's looking better. <clears throat> Let's go in with our dark pencil, put this over again. So this is going to be one of the darkest parts of the whale. It's right here, and right here. Underneath his fin, where it casts shadow in the shadow. That would be the absolute darkest part of this guy, I think. You know, it's cool. I'm seeing a little bit of glare now that I'm kind of pushing into the paper, but that glare, because of the angle, not really showing up, which is nice. Yeah, Marky's idea of a uh, whale or of Jonah is pretty, pretty darn good. I, I do like that. Matilda is a good idea too, though. You know what I was thinking to make it really kind of cryptic if I really wanted to would be for um, if I was to do something like the story of Jonah for the book. If I just, you know, searched on what Hebrew writing looked like or something, and then put that there, make it really kind of crazy. But I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know how obvious I want it to be what's actually in the book. I always struggle with one part of a drawing, and luckily this time it's the conceptual part more than it is the execution. But I always struggle with one part, and right now that is that is still the biggest question as to what I'm actually going to put in the book. I have no idea. Yeah, our dog is being bad if you can hear barking in the background. Typical, typical dog. That's why I like having that mid-tone. These two lines did not exist before, and I just race a little bit. And I got both the lines because the mid-tone that was already there. area would be the brightest, which is why I'm just going in with just the eraser right now to add some texture even within the bright area because there's just ever so little bit of graphite down up there. So I can cut through some of that. Just 
just adding some extra details and lines up near his eye just so I can again draw the person's draw the viewer's eye of this image to the eye So just a little bit more detail around, I think, just makes your eye want to go here first, which, and by that extra bit of detail around it is what'll do that. So our eyes are just attracted to more detail. You know, and if I add a little bit of darker lines too, right around this eye, that'll give me a nice bit of contrast right up there. Because that's another thing that draws the eye as well, is areas of bright lights and dark darks right next to each other. I moved my whole tissue paper out of the way instead of using it like I'm supposed to. All right. I think that looks pretty good around his eye. I, he doesn't have enough texture in this area here, nor nor this area. And then I need to add a couple of those bumps that whales have more towards their nose anyway. So he's going to have a couple of dark spots up here. Just add a few of those in right now, just so I don't forget, because that would that would be just like me. I'm still considering where the sun is coming, which is from the top right. So that's why I'm doing almost these C shapes. They're still circles, but because that sun is hitting from the upper right, I'm kind of losing that shape on the top right, each one of these little round things. Now, I'm looking at a few different, actually, let me switch over here. I'm looking at a few different reference images. Again, I don't want to show these because I'm sure that these are copywritten, but I'm just kind of learning the idea. And it looks like, you know what, even though the sunlight's still coming from the upper right, it looks like these spots on whales are almost all dark. They're like all filled in, even with light and highlights. maybe have a little bit of brightness around them some of them are more like teardrop shapes some of them are more just straight circles and some of them kind of look like this funky shape which looks like a little tiny harp to me Add some down here just to give a little bit of variance. But it, these are starting to stick out maybe a little bit too much. The eye is going here. And I want it to lead towards the eye. So let's maybe, well, let's, let's lead some more towards the eye. Also, I think these guys' mouths are kind of like up here. So there should be... A little bit of a roundedness somewhere up there. Mouth would go like that. It's going to fall off over the side. That line alone kind of helps bring the eye from up here into where I want it to go. Which works out nicely. Thank you, whales, for having mouths to help my art. I know that's the entire reason. Maybe I had a couple of little of the bumps. I still like those things. I, I I wanted a cute, ugly whale, you know? You can't be cute, ugly without a little ugliness, right? So let's make them a couple more of these cute, ugly bumps. And then I think if I erase around some of these, and blend some of these out, I think it'll start to really kind of come together a little bit better. So 
And like I said, there wasn't enough variance and tonality over in this area here. I'll just add a couple of bumps up here. Fill that in. Let's add a couple of smaller ones too. Just a few though. And I think we'll call it on that. They've got kind of these lines that wrap around the edge of their mouth. Go inward. And I think I need to add a couple more swooping lines around the eye from what I'm seeing. Going in with the highlighter. I keep almost wanting to call this eraser a highlighter for some reason. And I don't use highlighters. I think it's because I keep talking about highlights. Keep wanting to call it a highlighter. Uh, all right. I'm taking away a little bit too much, I think, over here. I want this to be more of a shadow area. Um, that shadow should be darker. There we go. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of take, yeah, this eraser, and I'm just gonna kind of scribble it around again. I'm laying the the tool do the work more than than me. And because I'm looking for irregular shapes, moving around like that, not really having any rhyme or reason. And it gives me that regularness that I, irregularness that I'm looking for. But it's still controlled. So like this, I'm going up and down. So that way it has that roundedness. One of the easiest ways to create three-dimensional objects is by shading in the direction of like the way that it, if you were to put your hand over something, this whale would be round, right? So I would draw like this, I would draw around it. You know, obviously this is flat, but to create that roundedness, you go up and make these little arches, right? Just like that. So if you erase in the direction of the shape that you're drawing, if you draw your shading lines with that in mind, even if you erase most of it, those underlying layers really, really help to create the, to create the shape. <laughs> Can't talk to create the shape that you're looking for. Because I see so many people <clears throat> in Discord groups and such, they'll end up saying like, oh, why, why does this look so flat? And all their shading lines are just back and forth like that, no matter what, no matter which way the shape is, it's just back and forth. And it doesn't have any curvature to it. And that's like, oh, well, that's why you're not you're not shading round you drew round but you're not shading round you're not erasing round uh that makes sense <laughs> i'm sorry i think i'm missing some of the comments again oh no just our dog being bad yeah <laughs> why is our deaf dog so loud She can't hear herself and she's got stuff to say. Really liking kind of where this is going other than, you know, I was messing around the, with the sizes, size of these pages down here. And ultimately I think I made this one smaller and I don't want to try and erase that. I'd rather give this more of the pages on the right and then the cover that I need to define the edge of this page, I think inward a little bit. That might've been too much. That's okay. OK, 
keep the same technique kind of through the whole thing. I erase too much, add back too much, erase too much, add back too much until you get that sort of Goldilocks moment and you're like, ah, that's just right. Smudge some of these out so you don't see pencil lines. Easiest way to make something look realistic in a drawing is get rid of your pencil lines. All right, let's see. What do we need to change about it? What What do we need to push further? What do we need to maybe take away some of or add to? I think, I think there's something going on in this area. Some of these lines are too dark. Some of the highlights are too bright. I'm just blending it out a bit. I think these lines are just, they're too heavy. They're not matching up with some of these other ones on the right. Just trying to get these a little bit more uniform. Not much. They should still have, you know, degrees of changes within them, but I think the right side just looks like a little bit of a mess. Maybe it's just all these lines. Maybe I need to actually kind of <clears throat> Excuse me, maybe I need to actually just flatten it out a lot more because you would lose some of that detail, I think, as it goes further down anyway. But that looks not smooth in there. I just go back in with our eraser. That highlight's just a little too bright down here. Okay. I think that's getting more, more the direction I like them. Now, I said before that I like... <laughs> I like the pretty and ugly, right? So I gave him a little scar right there. So I think I need to give him a couple more, not necessarily scars, but what's going on with my little eraser? Like little marks, like that this whale's lived a life, you know? Uh, thanks, buddy. I'm really working hard to add to this depth as we go. So it it slowly has gotten to be a much um, more dramatic gradient. It started off overall a lot lighter, and I was going to do a little bit darker down here, and now it's just gotten a lot darker down here, but it stayed just as light, I think, up at the top. So I think that's adding a nice, nice degree of depth. 
I need a couple more water lines. Just so, because I, I, I like this. I think it adds just a little bit, just enough where it's not just boring nothingness, you know? I saw somebody recently that did something like that and it was a it was a gorgeous uh gorgeous piece of work but half of their painting just looked like there was nothing there and it's like i get you're drawing the eye and stuff but you still need something not just nothingness because it just made that part of the the painting kind of boring Because there was nothing for the eye to look at. There's, it was just, uh, just white, all white. All right, I like where that's going. I think I need to get rid of some of the pencil lines that are over here on the left side. And I'm going to get a different eraser to give more of those little like scars and stuff. And I'm just going to kind of, oh, I like that. There's a texture. I don't know. I don't know if it can pick up for you guys, but there's a little, just ever so light of a texture in here now because of just this one thing. You know what? This is, this is zoom worthy. So I want to show you what I'm talking about. Let me see if this will work. Hey, hey. all right. Look at this high tech stuff. So right here, there's a lot of just little itty bitty lines that I'm using going back and forth. We're gonna use the blending stump to get rid of some of these so that way you don't see like this line that I just made go way too far over here. And with these, I don't need to really worry about being round because they kind of go all sorts of different directions, but I'm adding, I guess, maybe a little bit more if it's closer to me. A little bit less if it's further away. I like that though. That's that's giving a neat texture. Now I'm starting to go with the grain around the eye a little bit because this is a flat um, eraser, so it's going to create pretty straight lines. So I don't want to take away from the shape. There we go. I like that. Right, just backing out a little bit so we can see scuba diver and stuff again. Um, but that had just enough variation, I think, in in the texture of his skin that I like that. And let's add maybe a little bump down here. Again, just kind of bringing the eye down. So there's a lot more going on up here. Because ultimately, even if we don't want the book to necessarily be the first thing people see, that's still part of this, right? It's still a whole thing to make this whale of a tail. So I still need to think about drawing the eye down here. I think there's going to be enough no matter what I do. But, um, you know, I just looked up. I just saw something that I don't like. I actually don't like how bright the book is over here on the left. So I'm just going to take this makeup sponge. There we go. Now, this flashlight's starting to kind of stand out and do the job that we wanted it to. So, if I, you know what? Let's do it with this eraser. I think it can be a little bit more straight and accurate with it. So, the beam of light coming out of the scuba diver's flashlight should also be the brightest right at the flashlight. The light's emitting from. Just wanted to find that edge of that beam of light a little bit.
And then the other thing I can do to show the fall off of this light is just kind of dab a little bit at the end. And I'm gonna kind of redefine it. Do that like two or three times and then it'll create the look that I want. Yeah, I could hold a vote for the book, but I could just actually ask at family dinner since it's pretty much just you, me, mom, and dad that's going to vote on this anyway. I don't have a big enough uh, audience yet for a vote. That's okay. I like to usually do more personal stuff to me anyway. It's one reason why I'm not taking commissions. Visit my website, imakethat.com slash commissions. It just says no. <laughs> that really makes the beam of light stand out. The beam of light's not straight right now, and I know that, so it's that's bugging me a little bit. Um, I think what I'm going to do in that case is... You know, I was anti-ruler for like the longest time because I'm like, no, I can draw a straight line. No, I can't. Just Let's just be realistic. I can't draw a straight line. <laughs> if I can't draw a straight line, you think I can erase a straight line? That's better. And let's do the same thing on this side. You know, I think I might actually, to fix this, I have to go in with the graphite powder first because I think the sliver was just a little bit wider than I wanted it to be. It's okay. I've never actually used a ruler like this, but that actually makes a really cool mask. Yeah, I think there needs to be a little bit more right in here. And let's do it on the other side. That looks a little bit better. Looks more like an actual flashlight beam, I think. And then a lot of times with flashlights, you know, you have that because of the lens, the glass lens in front of it, you have that one line of light that like hit the edge. Something like that. I think this might be a little bit. Gotta think about the fall off of the light itself. So it's only gonna be so strong to a certain point. All right, I like that. A 
Let's go in with Really? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know how I do this all the time. Just nonstop. It's just nonstop with me with losing these tools. Like I don't even know where. Where did they put that other eraser? Whatever. Just add a little bit of that highlight back in just to kind of define the shape of the scuba, the scuba diver, the scuba diver again. Like coming off the shoulders. This is just the reflected light coming off of this book. So it wouldn't be much. I wouldn't see much on this guy. We would see a little bit. And then I'm going to take my kneaded eraser. Let's get some more texture back in here. Dabbing it around just so there's not just flat spaces. It's so boring if it's just flat. That's why I don't mind what's happening with the water, though I still will probably go in with graphite powder in some of these areas. That's still fine. I like that you can kind of barely see the scuba diver from your guys' point of view. The screen's a little bit darker than what I'm seeing. Lost some of the darkness of that center line of the book, but that's okay. I'll add that back in. I'm starting to get just really happy with where this is overall. Maybe we'll go another 15 minutes or so, but I'm liking where this one has gotten to at this point. I don't want to really overwork it because you can do that just as easily in a uh, drawing as you can in a painting yeah <laughs> well even that extra negative space sometimes and then your brain can fill in those different parts without you have to actually even having it drawn. I'll end up doing a tutorial on how to draw hair and fur. And that's another thing that you just don't define all that different, all the different strands. You do a lot of strands, but you don't define every strand. And some of times whenever you do a hair highlight, it's the absence of lines. You're just leaving it very, bright very white and then that lets you know that there's a there's a highlight there add some of this graphite powder back in it's kind of trying to smooth out some of the horizontal transitions you know i I could care less if there's, you know, a little bit like up here, it starts, there's some verticality to some of the stuff. I don't mind that, but like to define the depth 
and gradually get darker. I feel like if I don't define or if I don't get the horizontal similarities across the whole thing, like see how this is lighter over here than this, uh, this has that weird glow look to it again that we don't want. And part of that is because I did make everything darker. I didn't get this area darker, but if I don't get this depth, or it's not going to look like there's any depth to it. It's going to just going to look weird if I don't create the same tonality horizontally on this thing. It still looks like I'm getting a little. Does it look like that to you? You guys see this right here? It looks like it's still glowing, and that is just driving me bonkers. That means that I have to go in, have to get rid of a lot of that line that's right next to him. And I got to redo that. That's okay. It'll be worth it. Same thing down here. This is just too bright. Some of this needs to disappear, but I also need to redefine the whale so I don't lose him within all of this. So Steph asked earlier if it makes me nervous making some big decisions. And does it make me nervous? No, but <laughs> is it hyper frustrating if I have to redo the same work that I just worked so hard to do? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the nerve wracking thing to me. It's not really nerves. It's just I don't want to do this twice on the same thing. You know, if I'm going to do something twice, then it would make a lot more sense to just do it on a second sheet of paper, right? Because then I'd have two things to sell. <laughs> if I sell this, you know, I don't know if I'm going to sell my original work for a while just because, I don't know, these days you can kind of keep hold of your originals and then you can sell prints and stuff like that. I need to obviously redefine that fin. The book starts to get lost in there. I like that. Um, needs a little bit more, a couple more lines in there. I think I'm going to use mechanical pencil so I can get some really just sort of detail things. And let's see, music, let's start that over one more time. I don't know if you guys can even hear the music. I don't know if it tries to silence that since it's coming on my speakers or what. It's very, very low anyway. A little bit more definition to the scuba diver. Just a little bit though. Doesn't need to be much. Right now, I'm just looking at all the all the extra little things because if I'm going to wrap this up and call it pretty much done, just trying to pay attention to anything that's bugging me, <laughs> anything that's standing out that I need to just take another pass at. Obviously, other than the fin over here on the left.
kind of like that we lose some of his fin. And then if I just define those highlights again. I guess when I start thinking about details, I just shut up. <laughs> it's probably better for you guys anyway. All right. This area here, this area here, and this area here have nothing going on. And I don't like that. You know, like it's... That's that boring part I was talking about earlier. So let's change that up really quickly, just adding some extra highlights going through here. I can't wait till they make an eraser that is truly lint-free, dust-free or whatever, where it doesn't leave stuff all over your paper. So that kind of solved that problem there. There's still there's still not enough variance back here. Even though this is the darker area, it just feels kind of boring without any that highlights a little too bright in there, so I'm just smudging it down with my finger. Gonna scribble with the eraser and just to get some more of that texture. There we go. Now it's not starting to be so so boring in there. It looked just flat, like there was nothing. I don't know if you just saw that. Sometimes that is the bad part about these erasers is I'll go to erase and because it's got so much of that, see, so it just did it, it. It's laying down like a thick line from my previous erases. I should just be more diligent and grab a, um, piece of sanding paper or something, and then I could wipe it, or I could rub the eraser on the sandpaper and just get rid of that little bit of extra stuff that I erased. So I don't want the shape of his nose in the water. I do not want that. I don't want it to look like, I'll go in and erase that part. I think I'm really happy with this, the way it's turned out. Thank you so much, everybody that joined us live tonight. I'm going to be wrapping up pretty soon. Just uh, I want to get a couple more things in here. Be the dark part of that. Just as much as I like to add highlights and shadows along the way, it's kind of the last thing that I do too. So I go back, revisit the highlights and the shadows kind of just one more time 
just to see if there's anything extra that we missed or if there's anything extra that I want to push. Because sometimes it just needs that last little bit of oomph. And that's part of that being brave and going for those dark darks. And now that I have enough of my lines laid down and I'm comfortable with this back shape right here, I, I can be a little bit firmer on the pencil and I can really define that shape because I want this dark dark. I want this to be the shadow here and here. And if I push this and then I go back and I make these highlights brighter, this whole image stands out more because it's like a camera where they have what's called dynamic stops. And that determines really a lot of times how bright your highlights can go and how dark your shadows can go before there's noise introduced into the camera. And just by pushing our highlights a little bit brighter, making our shadows just a little bit darker, it's like we, we've just bought a camera that has two more stops of dynamic range, which is huge. That's a lot more, a lot more degrees of shading that you get to have by adding a little bit darker darks and a little bit brighter highlights. So I think I need to push the highlights this one last time. What I'm going to do with this guy, though, is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife. And so that I don't end up with that smudge like I got up here earlier, I'm just going to I'll just cut the tip of this eraser right off. That way it's giving me more like a brand new eraser to work with. All right, now we can go in with a clean eraser. these last highlights that I want to push this. I'll leave some of that spot on his nose. It's probably my favorite part of any drawing, doing this. Get that last bit of extra that you didn't know that you had in the drawing. It's like, okay, I think I'm done. And it's like you're running and you get that second wind and you're like, wow, I didn't know I had this in me to go that extra little bit. I feel like that in drawing whenever I get to push these highlights and shadows just right near the end. I don't want to go too bright too far down because then I'm going to lose that illusion of light. You know, I think I'd get rid of that actually. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I like that. Do a little highlight right around his eye. That'll attract our eye more. But I also want to use the electric eraser. Just get some of these extra highlights right in here. And I like using the electric eraser for this because some of these areas are just too tiny for me to take an eraser back and forth. And because this just spins in a nice little tight circle, it erases without me having to move the eraser back and forth. All right, I think that's good around his eye. Maybe a little bit more here. I don't like that line right there that I created. Let's go in with the blending stump. All right, and that's gone now. Cool. I think that created a little bit of depth right there. Where's a cloth? I need to get an air can just so I can spray this eraser shavings off without messing up my drawing. Do a couple more of these sort of random lines just to get some more texture in the skin. And 
My wife's trying to help me out, guys. <laughs> is the exacto knife? Is that the exacto knife you covered in your supply video? <laughs> She's making point that I made a supply video yesterday. I'm really enjoying making videos on YouTube. I'm gonna start making, I think, some more fun ones. My dad helped me film this one for how to do math, uh, easy master studies or easy master studies ideas, I think is what I'm gonna call it. And uh, he helped me film up at the library and that was a lot of fun. Went and checked out this ridiculous book from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. <laughs> It was the biggest book I could find in the library. <laughs> I go up to the front counter and they're like, it, it was my first time getting a library card up there too. And they're like, did you seriously go for the largest book in the entire library? I was like, no. And I got home and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. I don't want to, I don't want to go through this Metropolitan Museum of Art book. Everything looks tough in here. <laughs> I don't want to do all that work. So I was like, what's some easy master study ideas that I could come up with? And I ended up coming up with quite a few. So in a video that I'm going to release in the not too distant future, I think I'm going to think I'm have a lot of fun with that one. All right. I like, I think I like where, where he's kind of ended up. I don't know if I really want to take this much further. Um, I'm really happy with how little of detail is in the scuba diver. It's just kind of this thing that you end up seeing afterwards almost. Like, what is this over here? Uh, which maybe I need to define them a little bit more. Just a touch though. Cause I don't want, I don't want him to pop out too much. Because there's literally no light falling on him other than the little bit of reflections that are bouncing back at him. Make him a little bit darker just so that the viewer doesn't have a hard time finding and deciphering. Because that's the other thing we don't want to do. You know, a confused mind always says no. So if somebody is confused by the picture and they're trying to figure out part of what is that down there? They're gonna be like, oh, okay, sure. It's kind of like telling somebody why a joke is funny. I've got to explain like, oh, that smudge down there is a scuba diver. Then they'll be like, huh, huh cool, I guess. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. Stephanie showed me a painting earlier and uh, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out where the image was. She's like, you don't see that? It's right, it's right there. And I literally couldn't see it. My brain was looking at the image totally differently than the way it was intended. And I, I just, I, I was like, oh, oh, okay, I get it. But uh, whatever, I'm over it now. <laughs> so just a little bit more definition out of him there. I don't think I get that line back in here that I wanted. That was too much line right here. A couple last corrections. Just want to follow the pages a little bit. No, that made it worse. Let's blend some of the stuff back in. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and it's gone. All right, I think that's it. I think I'm happy with that. I really like the way that this one turned out. Thank you so much, everyone that joined me in this exploration of finding the whale. And whenever I finish the book, I will definitely post it. Um, if there's a couple other things I'm gonna finish on this drawing, it might be adding maybe a little bit more detail to things like the bubbles or something, things that don't really matter, but it's something that I'll just spend a couple of extra minutes on after I've stepped away and really look at this again, because that's kind of how, um, how drawings really work with me is I'll step away, 
come back to it, look at it 50 more times, and then I'll make one little mark. And that's and then that'll be it for the day. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm I think I'm pretty happy with this. Let's also just clean up maybe a little bit right here. We'll make this a little bit too light. And then we'll go back in, make it a little too dark. It looks like I hit the mouse. That's it. Awesome. Thank you everyone so much. I hope you have a wonderful night. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this live, make sure to let me know down in the comments. This is only my second live and it's only going to get better from here. And if you like the lives and want me to do more of these, happy to cover them and uh, can do on any subject. Doesn't just have to be me drawing the whole time. So maybe next time we'll do a painting or something or something fun. So we'll figure it out. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night.